Hello, Geometry Advance. Today, we are going to start Chapter 8. And the first part of Chapter 8 uh, should be a review. Maybe not all of it is a review, but majority of it uh, should be. It's dealing with ratios and proportions. So the goal is for this particular lesson to be able to recognize and work with ratios. Can you write them in the different forms? Uh, can you recognize and work with proportions? So could you solve for a variable in your proportion? Uh, can you apply the product and the ratio theorems? And then finally, calculate geometric means. So geometric mean is not the same thing as arithmetic mean. Arithmetic mean is what you think of as mean probably up to this point. Another word for mean, remember, is average. So again, geometric mean, out of all the things for today, this probably would be the new part for you. Okay, so let's start with ratio. Okay, the definition of a ratio is a quotient of two numbers. Technically, it could be two or more numbers, but a lot of times we talk about it in terms of two. So ratio, again, is a quotient of two numbers. Um, there are different ways that you can write a ratio. Okay, as you can see here, we can write it as a fraction. Three-fourths, three to four. We can write it as three to four this way. We could actually write it using the word two in the middle. Three to four. Or we could write it as 3 to 4 with a division symbol. Okay, so again, there's different ways that we can write a ratio. Now, in a ratio, the first number is considered the numerator. So that makes sense. The second number is the denominator. And you want to write it in lowest terms unless it's otherwise stated in the problem. So let's pretend that my ratio was 2 to 4. We would want to simplify that since 2 and 4 both have a common factor of 2. That should be a 1 to 2 ratio. So again, remember to simplify your ratio in lowest terms unless it's stated otherwise. Okay, so as we're talking about ratio in Algebra 1, when you're talking about a ratio, that, how that applies to Algebra 1, many times is talking about slope. Uh, so next. Let's see here if my board works. I did orient it earlier. So again, uh, what is slope? Okay, a lot of you think of slope as rise over run, the change in x's over the change, or the change in y over the change in x's. But the slope of the line is the ratio of the rise between any two points on the line to the run between any two points. So again, the rise, if you're thinking about your coordinate plane, are your y values. The run, horizontally, is the x values. So it's again the change in y over the change in x. You subtract your y's in the numerator, you subtract your x's in the same order in the denominator, and again, you simplify. So we're going to take a look at two particular examples in dealing with slope. So we have the ordered pair 5, 2, and 8, 6. And again, we are going to calculate the slope. So hopefully by now everybody's caught up again here. So to find the slope, again, it's y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I don't know why my board is acting up here, but we're just going to deal with it. Okay, so if you need to, 5, 2 could be like your x1, y1, and 8, 6 could be like your x2, y2. So to find the slope, again, we would take 6 minus 2, subtract my y's, over 8 minus 5. Okay, so as we continue on here, 6 minus 2 is 4, and 8 minus 5 is 3, so my slope would just be 4 to 3. Again, you're not going to write it as a mixed number, because it doesn't make sense. 
a ratio is a comparison of two numbers. Okay, so my other example, I have the ordered pair negative 2, 14. So again, I'm going to call that x1, y1. And my other ordered pair is 22 comma 4. So we're going to call that x2, y2. So again, I'm going to calculate the slope. So this particular problem for my slope, I'm going to take 4 minus 14. And again, you could have done 14 minus 4, but then you would have done negative 2 minus 22. So that's up to you. So again, if I do 4 minus 14 on the bottom, I'm going to do 22 minus negative 2, which would be like 22 plus 2. So as we continue on here, 4 minus 14 is negative 10, and 22 plus 2 is 24. Some of you would think, oh, okay, got it done. It's going to be negative 10 over 24. But again, we want to write it in simplest form, lowest term. Uh, negative 10 and 24 are both divisible by 2, so it would be negative 5 twelfths is my slope. Okay, so again, slope is a review of Algebra 1. But again, it's the rise over the run, change in y over change in x. Okay, so let's continue on to proportions. So if we first talk about what is a proportion, okay, proportion is an equation that states two or more ratios are equal. So again, a ratio or a proportion is an equation that states two or more ratios are equal. So I'm sure all of you at the top of your head could come up with two simple ratios that are equivalent. Um, I have two-thirds and six-ninths. Okay, two-thirds and six-ninths, hopefully everybody agrees, is equal. Another way to write it, again, two to three is equal to six to nine. Now besides writing it in terms of numbers, we could also write it in terms of variables because a proportion could have a variable within it. Okay, so another example I have with pure all variables here. I could say that A to B is equal to C to D. And again, another way to write it would be like that. A to B equals C to D. A lot of times in past experience, if people see a problem that's written in this form, a lot of times they want to write it in fraction form just because it's something they're more used to seeing. It's easier to deal with, and that's fine as well. But again, those are two different ways uh, to write a proportion. Now, when you're talking about a proportion, we talk about it in terms of it containing four terms. Okay, you have the first, second, third, and fourth if you go in order. The first and second, or I'm sorry, the first and fourth terms are called your extremes. And your second and third terms are called your means. So again, if we would order them, first, second, third, fourth, A would be first, B would be second, C would be third, and D with B fourth. Okay, so again, your first and fourth terms are called your extremes. Your second and third terms are called your means. So in this particular proportion, A to B equals C to D, your extremes, again, remember, are your first and your fourth. So A and D are your extremes. Your means are your second and your third. So in this particular proportion, B and C would be your means. Okay, so again, first and fourth are your extremes. Second and third are your means. Now we have the means extremes products theorem. Okay, a lot of you, this is what you would think of just how you solve a proportion when you do cross products. And the reason we can do that is because of this means extremes products theorem. So in a proportion, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. 
So in, if you look back at the example that I still have on the board here, A and D are your extremes, B and C are your means. So the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So I could say that B times C is equal to A times D. So again, a lot of you maybe think of it in terms of cross products. But again, A times D, your extremes, that product is equal to B times C, the product of the means. And again, that's what we normally think of as solving a proportion, doing these cross products. Now, some of you may think of as cross multiplying and dividing. I highly recommend you kind of avoid thinking of it that way, especially if you have some type of expression, like you can see in the second example with an x plus 2 in it rather than just an x. So again, the product of the means is equal to the product of the extremes. So the first of the two examples at the bottom here, we have 3 over x equals 24 over 32. So again, if we look at cross products, we're going to multiply 24 times x and set that equal to 3 times 32. Okay, so we have 3 times 32 is equal to 24 times x. If we multiply, 3 times 32 is 96. So again, if we have 24x is equal to 96, you would divide both sides by 24 and x would equal 4. So again, the product of your means equals the product of your extremes. Your cross products have to be equal. Okay, in the second example, we have 3 over 8 equals 5 over x plus 2. So again, the product of your means is equal to the product of your extremes. So we're going to have 3 times x plus 2 is equal to 8 times 5. Again, looking at cross products. So to continue with this one, we would need to distribute. So 3 times x is 3x. Three, 3 times 2 is 6. And that's going to equal 8 times 5, which is 40. So again, as we continue to solve for x here, we would subtract 6 from both sides. So 3x is going to equal 40 minus 6 is 34. So in this problem, if we divide by 3, uh, 34 is not evenly divisible by 3, so we can just leave it as 34 thirds. It is okay to have a fraction. So again, look at cross products, set them equal to each other, and solve using your Algebra 1 skills. Okay, as we continue on here, the means and extremes ratio. Okay, seems a little bit wordy. But it actually explains to you, you know, how you can change the order of the ratios in your proportion and they're still equal. So it says, if the product of a pair of non-zero numbers is equal to the product of another pair of non-zero numbers, then either pair of numbers can be made the extremes and the other pair the means of a proportion. So again, basically it's telling you that again, if the product of two numbers is equal to the product of another pair of numbers, then again, assuming they're both non-zero, any two, any pair of numbers can be made the extremes and the other pair can be your means. So I'll pause for a little bit to make sure everybody gets that written down here first before I continue on. So again, if the product of a pair of non-zero numbers is equal to the product of another pair of non-zero numbers, then either pair of numbers may be made the extremes and the other pair the means of the proportion. So 
So in the example here, we're given that GE is equal to OM. So my conclusion that I could state here would be that G over O equals M over E. So again, GE in this particular picture, let's see here, highlighter. So my G and my E, notice here, are your extremes. And in this situation, the M and the O here are your means. So again, the G and the E can switch places. The O and the M could switch places. So because of that, since I can switch places, if we look at another conclusion we can come up with, we could have O over G equals E over M. So in this situation, O and M are the extremes, and G and E are the means. But again, when you look at their cross products, you're still going to get G times E equals O times M. Same thing with this one up here. G times E equals O times M. Okay, there's different ways you can write that proportion, different ratios you can even use that would give you um, the same product to be true in the end. Okay, so continuing on here, starting to bring up this idea of geometric mean. It says in a mean proportion, the means are the same. Okay, so again, in a mean proportion, the means are the same. So if you look at this next uh, proportion here, if we have 1 over 5 equals 5 over 25, notice the mean in both of them are 5. And the next one, if we have 4 over x equals x over 25, again, notice the means are both x. They're the same. So again, in a mean proportion, the means are the same. So if we are trying to calculate geometric mean, okay, by definition, it says for geometric mean, if the means and a proportion are equal, like where they were in these two examples, e um, either is called a geometric mean or mean proportional between the extremes. So again, if the means and a proportion are equal, like we saw in these first two examples here, either is called a geometric mean between the extremes. So in this particular situation, if you look back at the first one, the geometric mean is 5. Okay, and the second one, the geometric mean is x. Okay, because again, the means are the same. They're both 5 in this first case, so the geometric mean is 5. And the second one, they're, the, geomet the means are both x, so the geometric mean is x. So again, if your means are equal in a proportion, then either one of them, because they are the same, either one of them is called the geometric mean between the extremes. So again, notice this is not the same thing as average. Arithmetic mean, or what you see is just regular, or just plain old mean, means average. Geometric mean means something different. Okay, so the next example we're going to look at uh, finding both the arithmetic mean and the geometric mean between two numbers. So if my two numbers are 6 and 14, and I'm just looking at the difference between them. If I'm trying to figure out the arithmetic mean, I'm going to average them. I'm going to add them together like you can see here, 6 plus 14 and divide by 2. So 6 plus 14 is 20, and 20 divided by 2 is 10. So your arithmetic mean between 6 and 14 is 10. If you're looking at the geometric mean, okay, notice the x is the same 
Okay, both of the means are the same. So to do that, again, if we look at cross products, x times x is x squared. 6 times 14 is 84. So if I have an equation like x squared equals 84, to solve it, you would take the square root of both sides. So we have the square root of x squared equals the square root of 84. Now, this works out nice when that number is a perfect square, but in this case, it's not. So if you think back to Algebra 1, all of you at some point uh, have learned how to simplify a radical. It's not a perfect square. So we're looking for, does 80 factor have a perfect square? That's a factor. What I mean by that, think of numbers that are perfect squares, like 2 squared is 4, uh, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, etc. So does 84 have a factor of any of these numbers, or even the ones that I haven't written? Yes, 84 is divisible by 4. So I can rewrite the square root of 84 as the square root of 2 times the square root of 21. Because again, or I'm sorry, 4 times the square root of 21. Because 4 times 21 is 84. Now again, the reason I did that, okay, we know the square root of 4 is 2. So my answer is going to be plus or minus 2 root 21. So again, if that is not a perfect square, you need to make sure you simplify as far as you can. Don't leave it as just the square root of 84. Don't round it as a decimal. We want the exact number. Okay. So as we continue on here. Okay, next we're going to find the fourth proportional for the set of the three terms. So if we have the numbers of 7, 8, and 9. We would say, think about this one, 7 over 8 equals 9 over, let's say, x. Okay, so again, if we're looking at it, 7 over 8 equals 9 over x. Again, we're going to do cross products. So 7 times x is 7x. 8 times 9 is 72. So then if we divide both sides by 7, we're going to say my answer is 72 sevenths. Okay, and the second one, if we have the three terms are C, 3, and P. Again, we're going to call the fourth one X if you want to. So we could say C over 3 equals P over X. That's that fourth one that we're looking for because think about it in terms. Remember, 1, 2, this is the first, this is the second. That's equal to the third over the fourth. So the fourth one here is, again, what you're looking for in these two problems I've called it x. So again, if we look at cross products, c times x is cx, 3 times p is 3p. So again, we want to solve for x. So in this case, we're going to divide both sides by c. So we're going to have x equals 3p over c. So again, notice everything we've been doing today is they're dealing with ratios or proportions. So to finish things up here, we're going to practice a few examples where we want to find the ratio of x to y. Okay, so if I have 5x equals 2y, I want to know what x to y is going to be. Okay, so to do that, we're going to divide, again, I want x over y on the left side and y or on the constants on the other sides. So to get x on this side by itself, we're going to divide both sides by 5. And to get rid of y on the right side, we're going to divide both sides by y. Okay, so notice my y's are going to cancel out on the right side and the 5's are going to cancel out on the left side. So we're going to end up with x to y is equal to 2 to 5. So again, it's trying to manipulate your equation to get the x over y on the left side and then the constants on the right. So in this next particular problem, <clears throat> okay, we've got 
4 times the quantity x minus 5 equals 2 times the quantity y minus 10. So for this one, the first thing I would recommend is to distribute. So we're going to have 4 times x, which is 4x. 4 times negative 5 is negative 20. On the right side, 2 times y is 2y. 2 times negative 10 is negative 20. Now notice in this problem, if you would add 20 to both sides, that's going to drop out. So we're going to have 4x is equal to 2y. So again, just like in the previous problem, we want x over y on the left side and the constant on the other. So to get just an x on the left side, we're going to divide both sides by 4. And to get the y on the left side, we're going to divide both sides by y. So notice the 4s cancel out, the y's cancel out. So we can say x to y equals 2 to 4. Now remember, we said if it's a ratio, we want to write it in lowest terms. We want to simplify it. So we can actually simplify 2 to 4 as 1 to 2. So my final answer is going to be x to y equals 1 to 2. So again, we want to write it in the simplest form as possible. We want to reduce if it's possible. Okay, so the next one we're looking at is x times the quantity a plus b equals y times the quantity c plus d. Okay, now for this one. If we are trying to get just x to y on the left side by itself here. Okay, I want to get rid, instead of multiplying everything out, I want to get rid of this a plus b on the right. So I'm going to divide both sides by a plus b. Okay, now I also want to get rid of the y on the right side. So I'm going to divide both sides by y as well. So notice my a plus b's cancel out. I'm just left with x over y on the left side. My y's are going to cancel out on the right side. So I'm left with c plus d over a plus b. So again, that's the ratio of x to y. You're not actually figuring out what x is and what y is. You're manipulating your equation to get it in this particular form. Okay, so the last thing we're going to look at today here, besides, you know, specifically writing it in terms of x to y, uh, we're going to show that if a to b equals c to d, then a plus 2b to b is equal to c plus 2d to d. So again, our answer is showing that we can manipulate this particular proportion to make it look like the other one. So again, we're given that a to b equals c to d. Again, it's about manipulation. Okay, so next. Okay, we're going to add 2 to each side here. Because again, whatever you do to the left, you have to do to the right. And the reason that I'm adding 2 to both sides is look at this particular end result here. Okay, if I divide B to by B, that's just 2 here. And if I divide D by D, that's just 2. So that's the reason that we're adding 2 to both sides. We're just trying to manipulate it to show that those two are equivalent. So again, I'm going to add 2 to both sides, because if I add to the left, I can add 2 to the right. That's being equal. Okay, so next, to have a common denominator, 2 is the same thing as saying 2b over b, because my common denominator near needs to be b. On the right side, 2 is the same thing as saying 2d over d, because again, my common denominator on the right side needs to be d. So once they have the same denominator on each side, we can write, combine the numerators, I should say. So we can write this as a plus 2b over b on the left side. And on the right side, we can write it as c plus 2d over d. So again, what we're doing on this particular problem is just manipulating the proportion to make it look like something else. So we're going to have this particular lesson as a two-day assignment. Okay. Today, you're going to do the day one part. So it's page 
328, numbers 4 through 15. Tomorrow when I'm back, I can clear up any confusion maybe that you still have. Um, if we need to take a look at a few more examples, that's fine. And then tomorrow's assignment will be page 331, 16 through 24 even, and 25 through 27. So make sure we're using our time wisely. Get out your textbooks. Go ahead and get started on today's assignment, and I will see everyone tomorrow.